Alrighty, here we are. Another exciting new bike release. This is the 2021 Marin Alpine Trail C1. This is a bike that as a shop we have known about for a while, um, but is uh, a fresh release to the public. And we are very, very fortunate to have gotten uh, both the Carbon 1 and Carbon 2 models before they were released to the public. Um, partially because we're a long time Marin dealer, partially because we're really lucky, uh, and also because we put in orders on these guys really, really early, um, trusting from geometry charts and etch-a-sketch pictures that this was going to be a really important bike. And uh, now that we've got them, I think, uh, yeah, the bike has actually probably impressed us even more. So big thing here, this is a 150 millimeter travel rear, 160 millimeter travel fork bike with really progressive geometry numbers. So to see a really usable spec on a bike like this at $41.99, and that's a Canadian price, is oh so impressive. So carbon mainframe on this guy, an alloy rear triangle, and as I mentioned, very, very progressive numbers. And by that, I mean, this bike has a 63 and a half degree head tube angle, a 78 degree seat tube angle, a 480 millimeter reach. This is a size large, so 480 on a size large. And then nice and short 430 millimeter long chain stays in the back. So a number of things on here that are right at the cutting edge um, and not cutting edge wacky, but I think cutting edge where people are begging bike companies to be and where you're used to looking at the ultra high end stuff to deliver on cutting edge geometry. We're seeing it on what is in my mind, one of the absolute best price points for performance for value for everything um, that we're seeing in the full suspension mountain bike market this year. So with 150 mil rear and 160 mil fork and the kind of numbers we're talking about, um, you would expect this bike to basically be um, just a gravity fiend of a bike. Um, I have done extensive testing now on the Carbon 2 version of this bike and it is more than just a gravity bike. Um, this is, while being a little bit hefty for weight, um, it is an absolutely usable bike for trails that go up and down. Though this is still a bike that really, really is about um, really giving you the best payback on the downhills. So I'll show you the specs on this guy. We'll talk about the details. Um, I'll tell you the weight and uh, you will know a little bit more about one of the most exciting bikes for 2021. Um, let's get into it. So we have the Shimano Dior 1x12 drivetrain on this guy. So the Dior, as we now know, in 1x12, it's a clutch derailleur system. So that clutch, of course, is the thing that gives us a really strong spring on that derailleur there. Um, it gives us the offsetting so that if you have to remove a wheel um, to replace a tube or something like that, you can turn that off and you're not battling all the tension or you turn it on and you got this really strong spring. What that's doing for us is basically um, reducing the amount that the chain can bounce around so that tension combined with having a really nice narrow wide chain ring on there which means really complete tooth profiles and you can basically ride some pretty gnarly stuff and really minimize the chance of a chain bouncing off that front chain ring. Uh, on that 1x12 drivetrain of course with the new Shimano Dior stuff your gear range is from 10 to 51 teeth so you're getting more than enough range of gears to have a good climbing gear and still have a gear that you're getting into terrifying speeds on descents if you're down at the bottom of this thing using that 10 tooth. Um, 
Rims on this guy, these are Marin rims that are very common on a lot of their bikes. They're a 29 millimeter internal width, so a really usable sort of a width and one that gives you great performance out of your tires. In this case, you're looking at Maxxis Ass Guy 29 by 2.5 wide trail tires. And even on this price point pike bike, they're putting double down tires on this guy in max grip. So that double down casing is a really durable casing and it also actually helps um, in the bike sort of handling characteristics. You find that when you're using a little bit heavier casing like this, it really makes your bike feel sort of planted to the ground. It's not pinging around so much off rocks and things like that. In general, on the rear end of this bike, we're looking at a linkage driven single pivot bike. So we have a single pivot placed right there, basically in line with that chain ring, which happens to be the magical spot where we get really, really good pedaling performance out of the bike. And by linkage driven, that means that we have a pivot here uh, on the seat stay, not on the chain stay. So the rear wheel is making a simple arc around that single pivot but then we have this seat stay that is driving this ever so nice and clean rocker link and then driving our shock vertically. In this case, we are looking at a Rock Shock uh, Deluxe Select Plus rear shock. Um, so that is a relatively simple rear shock, but giving us all the features that we would want, being an air shock with rebound adjustment and a lockout switch on there that you, uh, in my opinion, you don't need it, but whatever. Some people get really fixated on what on wanting a uh, a rear lockout. Um, I do like the fact that on these uh, Rock Shocks rear shocks, they do give us that sort of uh, marking system there, so you can easily uh, sort of measure your sag measurement when you're doing your initial setup on there. We've got FSA Comet cranks on here. I showed you that, what do they call this thing? Megatooth uh, narrow wide chain ring on here. It's a steel chain ring. Um, it's gonna work really fine. Um, a nice set of cranks on here. These are 170 millimeter cranks, no matter the size of bike in this case, they're putting 170 millimeter long cranks on here which is a shorter crank than what is more typical on trail bikes and stuff. The thinking there being a couple things. There's been a lot of research um, about pedaling efficiency, um, showing that shorter cranks um, are basically every bit as efficient as longer cranks. There was some old school thinking that long cranks gave us a lot of torque. Um, in reality, what they find is that you really don't lose much with a shorter crank. But what you gain is the fact that your uh, bottom bracket on all these modern bikes is starting to get pretty low, close to the ground. So that pedal is not, or where that pedal would be, isn't too far off the ground. Um, once you're sagged into the bike a little bit, um, pedal strikes are a common thing basically on these new modern bikes. So shortening the cranks a little bit is going to give us a little bit less chance of pedal strikes. And I actually, um, I'm six foot one and I have really long legs and I've been upgrading my bikes to 170 the last few years um, as a way to reduce pedal strikes. And I quite like the feel actually. Um, we have some nice hardware on here, a stainless bolt holding the bottom of that rear shock and then the other bolts have nice alloy caps on them that are showing us torque settings, all that sort of stuff. And it all is pretty heavy duty. Showing the back here at the seat stays, one of the nice features or one of the features that allows them to have that really short rear end on this type of a bike is by not actually having an arch joining the two seat stays back here. Um, that arch would usually be there to provide some extra stiffness. In this case, they've got these really beefy pivots and then a beefy rocker link and that's providing all the stiffness we need. And that also relates to why the rear end on this bike is made of alloy and start of, instead of carbon fiber is I think Marin is really concentrating on this bike being 
a strong, stiff bike, um, not something that they're trying to win the lightweight awards and then having to do a bunch of warranty claims. Um, I think Marin really wants, especially if you're making a price point bike, um, you can't afford to be making an ultralight price point um, bike because it means you're going to have to basically for every 10 frames you make, you probably have to make an extra extra one to have hanging around in your warranty department because light bikes break. This will not. Um, an absolutely beautiful finish on this bike. I love the details, the shape of this sort of gusset here. If you look at how far down that seat tube goes before we get this little bit of a jog, that gives us an idea that we're going to have really long dropper post insertion. This pivot for the rocker is not impeding your seat post's ability to go down. We don't have a huge kink there, so we're not going to have a massive difference between that sort of published 78 degree seat tube angle and what you actually get if you're a tall guy like me. I find this to be an ultra comfortable seating position for climbing uh, this nice steep seat tube angle. The dropper post on here is a Trans X dropper post. This from my riding this bike is maybe my only complaint is that it's 150 millimeters long on I think the medium and large and goes to 170 on an extra large. Um, I on my size large, I've been sort of testing for the last week. I could easily put a 210 dropper on and the joke in the shop is that I could be running like a 250 dropper on that bike because this is such a pronounced short seat tube on this bike to be as new school as possible and allowing people to run long droppers even if they are in the short-legged group of people. Um, nice graphics here. So this is just showing that Carbon one with a cool logo on there. Some really subtle sort of graphics. Um, you can just sort of pick up there that you're actually where it looks like black. As soon as you have the right light on this, you're actually looking through and seeing the the very, very fine uh, carbon, carbon weave that's in there. And then some fine details of graphics there. We do have room on here for a water bottle mount on the down tube and then they give a second set of water bottle mounts which um, there wouldn't be room to actually put a water bottle up here if you were using the, uh, the lower mount uh, for a water bottle but that does give us room that you could mount um, tools, pump, tu tube, something like that underneath the top tube. So. Uh, not giving us like a SWAT storage area or anything like a specialized, but we're also in a massively reduced price over anything similar from specialized for spec. We have a bolted on and glued on, I believe, a uh, nice guard on the bottom of the down tube here. Some more Marin deckling going down the down tube. Some internal cable routing, and it's pretty clean, the cable routing on here. We even see cables going back into the chain stays again. Things like the brake uh, hose going back inside the, uh, the chain stays as well on the other side there. The Marin saddle, which is, it's a little bit flat for my Taste, but actually feels pretty good. It's a it's a nice saddle. Um, not tons of rail to play with. It seems like clamps on all these posts are getting a little bit longer. So on this guy, we have that Dior uh, derailleur. I did notice that we have an unusual thing on this particular bike because we got this super super early and these were bikes that were probably lumped into bikes that were sent out for media release. I think Marin was really uh, just doing whatever they could scrambling at the factory to get bikes out and so this particular one comes with an SLX 12 speed rear uh, shifter. It uh, The spec sheet says that that's supposed to be Dior. 
Everything else that I've seen on here looks at least like it is uh, representative of the spec sheet that we ordered off of. We have Shimano 4 series, 4 piston brakes. So in the 4 series, there's 4 and 5 series uh, brakes. These have this little bit longer brake lever than the 5 series brake. But as long as you ride your lever in a little bit like that, you're still going to have easy one finger braking. So nothing to uh, be concerned about. We've got the Marin lock on grips the Marin handlebars that we see on a number of their uh, bikes. These do have a pretty nice rise and sweep to them, so you wouldn't have to upgrade anything. We've got a Marin stem on here. I believe that's a 35 millimeter um, long stem, and it's a 31.8, not a 35 mil clamp area. So they're, um, they're trying to give you bars that are going to have just a little bit of flex in there to try and give you a bit more comfort. Our fork on here, 160 millimeter RockShox Yari. So the Yari is a 35 millimeter stanchion fork. It is sort of the uh, poor man's version of a Lyric. And part of that comes from the fact that we have fairly simple um, compression adjustment on there. We still have rebound adjustment down here. It's still a through axle as the rear end of the frame is through axle as well. It's a boost 148 by 12 rear axle. Um, there's our air cap to show that yes, it's an air fork. Like the rear shock, we have our little markings on the stanchion here to show what our sag, uh, or to help us with sag measurements. Um, and that would be using our little orange ring there. There's that four piston brake. We do have, um, let's just see here. I wanna make sure that this is following what I'm imagining. I think this is a 203. Yeah, it's a 203 rotor on the front, a 180 on the rear. Following along with the back of this uh, bike, this is an Askai, Maxxis Askai tire on the front. And then it is an EXO Plus casing, so not quite as heavy a casing. So the tire choice is on here, both for being an Askai, being one of the most popular um, aggressive terrain um, downhill tires on the market. And then having that double down rear and EXO Plus on the front is very much like what you're seeing um, enduro racers basically doing as personalized touches on their bikes. So. This at 4,200 bucks is probably the closest $4,200 um, out of the box enduro race bike you will find out there. Um, everything from the bike's geometry to the tire choice, to the casing choice on the tire, to the suspension, the brakes, all of it is stretching your 4,200 bucks to getting you the most capable bike possible. The tires are tubeless ready. But these are inner tubes that are in here at the moment. So um, you would have to buy some valves and some sealant. Uh, the rims are already taped on this guy, so it's not a, uh, a difficult job to set this up tubeless. There's the new square Marin head badge on there with the bear and the star. I'll show you that internal cable routing on here. So a nice little touch down here is the way this rear shock is mounted. We don't have a trap for a bunch of goop to get stuck in there. Like a lot of cases you have kind of an area where mud wants to collect at the bottom of your um, rear shock. In this case, it's wide open. The frame is still sort of nice and rounded in that area. There's showing the detail of that rear brake line heading into the chain stay and then back out again. Your four piston brake on the rear. This is uh, a threaded BB for all those people who, uh, I mean, threaded BBs just make life easy. It's not a press fit. Um, it leaves you with uh, a lot more ease of taking bottom bracket out. Um, if you're doing any kind of switcheroo or replacing cranks or anything, you're not in a hunt for some 
wacky sort of a bottom bracket of her. Those details on that top tube, seat tube sort of junction there. So I told you I'd mention the weight. This guy, as is, weighs in at about 34 and a half pounds. So that is coming down to, this is a hefty frame, but this is also, these tires themselves, um, they weigh a lot. When you get into stuff like a, um, a downhill oriented tire, there's a lot of rubber on there and there's a lot of casing and you also have tubes inside. So once you switch to tubeless, you're probably gonna take half a pound off the weight of this bike. You could end up, one of the things I was thinking with this is, um, for some people, if they were going to race enduro on this bike, you would maybe even, um, once you got the bike, even take these tires off, leave them as your race day tires, and put some light tires on. If this is gonna be a bike that's gonna be your daily rider, but also an enduro race bike, leave these fresh ass guys as your race tires and just put like an XO plus um, rear XO tire on the front. Um, maybe uh, do like a dissector and a DHF or something like that as a little bit more of a trail tire, but these tires are freaking genius that they're putting them on uh, a bike at this price point. Another thing regarding that weight, so there's the tires, the Marin wheels aren't particularly light. Um, you've also got things like the Dior cassette, which has a lot of steel in it, which makes it incredibly durable, but it's a little bit of a heavy cassette, not as heavy as a SRAM SX cassette, um, but I don't think anything is that heavy. Um, you'd have a couple spots. This fork isn't the lightest thing, but it's also a super durable fork. So this is a bike that you have to put aside your weight weenie and embrace your performance weenie because this bike will absolutely destroy on descents and uh, sometimes the bike that makes it to the bottom super fast and in one piece is better than the bike that is really light and sitting in pieces halfway down the descent. Um, there will be another video um, I will link to that goes over my ride impressions of riding the Alpine Trail Carbon 2. So a lot of those ride impressions are basically going to cross over to this bike because it's largely about the way the suspension works, the way that geometry works. Um, all of those things will be covered. So if you want to know more about how uh, Marin Alpine Trail uh, actually works on the trail, look for that link at the end of this video. Um, otherwise, you now know what the details look like, what the specs look like and a little bit more about one of the bikes that probably has all of us at the shop here super, super excited for 2021 and uh, so thankful that Marin is making stuff like this that we can actually get people on super shredder bikes in this sort of price point. Hope you're all well. Get out there, ride a bike, or buy a bike. Once again, we're bike bros. We love talking about bikes and we love putting people on bikes that are gonna put huge smiles on their face. Ciao.